The sun is our nearest star. It provides the light energy that powers photosynthesis in plants. Its heat drives pretty much every weather process. And of course, it provides the light that illuminates our day. And the sun is not the only star out there. There are trillions and trillions of other stars in the universe a small, small fraction of which are visible to us at nighttime. But what is a star such as our sun made of? Being very far away and presumably very hot, it's hard to see how you could take a sample of the sun's material. This is probably impossible. So how do scientists figure out what the sun is made of? And this is, in fact, the goal of this video. We want to be able to use spectroscopy to determine the elements that make up a star. And spectroscopy is just a term for the study of light. Spectro means light or color, and scopy means to view or observe. So in this video, we're learning about stars. Now there's probably a couple of assumptions we can make right now. One of them is that stars are made out of gas. You've probably heard that before. And the other is that stars emit light. They're literally balls of glowing gas. Well, I have the ability here to actually produce some glowing gas, and we might be able to figure out something about stars by investigating our glowing gas. This is a power source, and here I have a tube. This tube has two metal contacts on the end, and it's filled with a gas. The gas this tube contains is hydrogen. It's element number one on the periodic table. So let's plug that in. and flip the switch. That is a glowing gas, a little bit like the glowing gas that a star might be made out of. Now, would you believe me if I told you that you could take the light from that glowing gas and figure out what colors it's made out of? You can split it up into its component colors. Well, to do that, we can use an instrument called a spectroscope. So let's take a look and see what the spectroscope tells us about the light from this glowing hydrogen gas. Look at that. So our spectroscope can split up the light from hydrogen into its component colors. Each of these bright colored lines is called an emission line, and this is the emission spectrum for hydrogen. Let's take a look at a couple of other elements. The gas in this emission tube is helium. This is element number two on the periodic table. Notice right away, that glowing gas is a different color. All right, that is the emission spectrum for helium gas. Notice that the emission spectrum is completely different. The emission lines are different brightnesses, different colors in different places. Here's the emission spectrum for nitrogen gas. Here's neon. Argon. And mercury. So we see that each different element gives us a different emission spectrum. They all have different emission lines. Let's head to the drawing board and figure out how to use those emission lines to tell what kinds of elements we find in stars. So let's see if we can use a star's emission spectrum to identify which elements are in that star. Recall that an emission spectrum looks a little bit like a rainbow and that each of these colored lines is an emission line in this emission spectrum. And keep in mind that a lot of times when you see an emission spectrum, it's shown in black and white. 
So rather than colored lines, what we see here are black lines, which simply represent those bright bands of color we saw earlier. And by observing gas discharge tubes like the ones we saw earlier, we know the emission spectra for pretty much all known elements. Here are just a few elements, along with their corresponding emission spectra, that we'll use in some examples. For our first example, let's try to use an emission spectrum to identify which elements we'll find in our own sun. Here is a simple example of our sun's emission spectrum. It's a mystery spectrum in that we don't immediately know which elements are in it. If we compare this mystery spectrum to the spectra of elements that we already know, we can align them and find out which elements are found in the mystery spectrum. Carefully examine the emission spectrum for our sun. There are two elements hidden in our sun's emission spectrum. See if you can identify which elements those are. You might want to pause at these intervals to give yourself as much time as you want to figure out which elements the mystery spectrum has. After careful analysis, you might have been able to identify the emission lines for the element hydrogen, indicated here in red. But you'll also notice a variety of lines that don't belong to hydrogen. Those lines belong to the element helium. That means that our sun contains the elements hydrogen and helium, and both of those elements show up in its emission spectrum. Let's look at some more examples. This is the emission spectrum for star A. Star A contains two elements. Can you identify which two elements are hidden in the emission spectrum for star A? After careful analysis, you should have been able to identify the emission lines for hydrogen indicated here in red, and lithium, whose lines are indicated here in green. This means that star A contains the elements hydrogen and lithium. By the way, the order in which you identify the elements doesn't matter. However, to be able to confidently say that you spotted a specific element in an emission spectrum, you technically have to be able to identify each and every individual emission line that that element produced. If even one emission line from that element is missing, that means that the element is not present in the star. Let's look at another example, star B. Once again, there are two elements found in star B. And these ones are a little trickier than the elements we found in the previous example. Look at the mystery spectrum for star B and see if you can identify which two elements are found in this star. After carefully analyzing the emission spectrum for star B, the first element you probably identified was carbon, indicated here in gold. These lines, which don't belong to carbon, belong to helium indicated here in blue. That means that star B contains both carbon and helium. The next example once again contains two elements in star C. Can you identify which two elements are found in this star by using the emission spectrum? If you looked carefully, you should have been able to identify the elements oxygen indicated here in a pinkish hue, and helium, indicated here in blue. That means that star C contains oxygen and helium. Star D is our first example that contains three elements. Carefully examine the emission spectrum and see if you can pick out which three elements are in star D. With any luck, you should have been able to identify carbon's emission spectrum pretty quickly, indicated here in gold. Then, hopefully, you identified the emission lines for helium, indicated here in blue. 
And finally, hidden among this forest of emission lines are the three emission lines for hydrogen, indicated here in red. This means that star D contains the elements carbon, helium, and hydrogen. Note that hydrogen and lithium, because their emission spectra are so simple, are often the most difficult to find in a complex emission spectrum. Example E is the emission spectrum for yet another star that contains three elements. See if you can identify which three elements star E contains. With a bit of luck and persistence, you might have been able to identify the element oxygen, indicated here in pink, carbon, indicated by gold, and helium, indicated in blue. Example F is another star that has three elements in its spectra, and it's probably the trickiest one of all of the examples. Can you identify which three elements are in the emission spectrum for star F? After careful analysis, if you were patient and persistent, you should have been able to identify the three elements in star F. These are nitrogen, indicated here in purple, helium, indicated here in blue, and then hydrogen was hiding in the background, indicated here in red. We know lots about space thanks to spectroscopy, the study of emission spectra. That means that any element we run into, we can find and study using this technique, including hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, beryllium carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silver, phosphorus, sulfur, sulfur, calcium, calcium, calcium titanium, 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 chromium, and much, much more. Using emission spectra, we have found out the compositions of our planetary neighbors, such as Jupiter. By studying the emission spectra of Jupiter's atmosphere, we know it's made mostly of hydrogen and helium. We've also determined the elements in much more distant neighbors, such as the Orion Nebula, pictured here in what are called narrowband wavelengths. In this image, the orange core is hydrogen, the bluish cloud is oxygen, and the red area surrounding that is ionized sulfur. Moving out still farther, we can even make interesting conclusions about the compositions of other galaxies, such as the Andromeda Galaxy. Thanks to spectroscopy, the study of emission spectra, we know that these dark bands are lanes of dust, mostly carbon, while these brighter fuzzy areas are rich in lighter elements, such as hydrogen gas. We've even used spectroscopy to estimate the composition of the universe as a whole. These thousand dots represent all the atoms in the universe. Of these, most of them are hydrogen atoms. A significant chunk of them are helium, this little bit is oxygen, and the remaining fraction of a percent is all other elements combined. From this, we know that nearly the entire universe is made of hydrogen and helium. Let's review the goal of this video to make sure that you met the goal. After watching this video, you should be able to use spectroscopy to determine the elements that make up a star. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you didn't understand. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.